Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's go to the newspapers now and of course see what major stories uh, making headlines this morning. I uh, would say good morning to our guest, uh, Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure to be with you. All right. We're kicking off with the Daily Sun newspapers this morning. And uh, the big one there you can see, yep, it says uh, federal government fumes as Twitter pulls down Buhari's Civil War tweet. Igbo's abroad insist on restructuring and fiscal federalism. Condemn government's shoot and side order. Also, um, while in you know, a follow-up to the federal government and Twitter uh, issue, it says the president writes to express his anger, says Lai Mohammed. Fayoshi, Bogalu, Omokri, others knock government. Christians have a right to defend themselves against attacks, says uh, Archbishop Martins. Senate ends discrimination against poorly graduates. And uh, we can also see COVID-19, government approves 5.6 billion naira for 37 oxygen plants. Tension as gunmen kill Autumn's aid. Police nab suspects. And uh, also, uh, 14,468 passports ready for collection in Lagos, says the NIS. Lawan, Kalu, Tinubu hail new NGE officials. Agitation for self-determination, not felony. And that's from the Alafio for you all. Um, all right, those are the stories on the Daily Sun. On the Nation newspaper, police says how we uncovered AK-47 production factory. Governor's security advisors, killers, traced him to a restaurant. IPOB men gathering in Edo, say police. Foreign herders have camps in Southwest, says Amotekun boss. Tinubu urges journalists to work with responsibility. Editors ask government to tackle insecurity. Three women in Undo building collapse. Three women die in Undo building collapse. Jam blames candidates for UTME hitches. Buhari's tweets sparks row between federal government and Twitter. Unilag sacks Randy lecturers. 11 Yahoo boys or internet fraud stars held in Lagos. Those are the stories on the nation. To the punch newspapers uh, now. Nigerians attack federal government. Government fumes as Twitter deletes Buhari's civil war post. Buhari's tweet violates our rules, says uh, Twitter. And also post proves the president is a dictator, says Adebanjo. President's comments suggest violence may incite bloody reactions, and that's from SANs, CSOs, and others. And we also can see federal government threatens U.S. firm, accuses Twitter of polarizing Nigeria, alleges mission suspicious. Still on the punch, 81 suspected kidnappers, bandits paraded, 17 AK-47 rifles recovered. Um, we can also see on the uh, punch this morning, Foreign headsmen in Southwest Forest likely to launch attacks, says um, Amoteku. Eight feared killed as truck rams into motorcycles in Lagos. Okada riders kick. And uh, community panics as gunmen kill Fulani leader in Kwara in Burgo shops. Oshun bank robbers flee as police hunt hunters confront raiders. Casualties unknown. Uh, we can also see here Unilag fires lecturers mentioned in sexual harassment story. Oil industry's future at risk, Bakindo warns Nigeria and others. And food scarcity looms if open grazing continues, declares Okoa. Bankers dare EFCC say we are not afraid to declare assets. And finally, we are planning four airports concession for 30 years. That's from the federal government. Okay, moving on now to the next newspaper, The Daily Independence. Okurocha says Buhari has failed on campaign promises. Above the headline on the Daily Independence, DIG raises the alarm over alleged infiltration of IPOB into Edo State. Senate receives bill to extend, to extend teachers' retirement age. Moves to close Polytechnic University dichotomy. Or you to launch anti-open grazing tax force in eight weeks. That's according to McIndy. Civil War remark, federal government accuses Twitter of double standard, alleges Twitter funded NSAR's protest. Former Governor Mimiko Mitsubuni set to join APC. 
Governor Jerry Disone's aide arrested by DSS over alleged inciting comment. Federal government proposes 30 years concession for Lagos, Abuja, other airports. Group documents APC, Buhari's achievement. Lastly, on the Daily Independence, Niger government bans Okada as insecurity worsened. I think those are the ones we can take on the papers this morning. Good morning to you once again, Mr. Yaitok. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, so many big stories here on, you know, the newspapers from an alleged, uh, you know, plot by IPOB to invade Edo State. In fact, the news say that they are already gathering in Edo State to the uncovering of an AK-47 uh, rifle production factory to Twitter versus the president. Where do we begin? Twitter president, obviously. I... I'm worried, I keep using this expression and it bothers me, that um, we don't seem to know what the office of the president of the largest black nation on earth should mean. When people compare the tweet of Mr. President with the tweet of Nam Kano, I just feel so sad and so belittled that the office of the president of the smallest country cannot be compared with an individual of that country. Not to talk of the person that we call, the country we call the giant of Africa, the largest city of the black world. The president is compared to one young man somewhere, and it's sad. Number two, we run a government that does not appreciate and understand processes and administrative procedures of institutions. There's a way that Twitter behaves and operates. The moment that somebody posts something and a certain number of people um, you know, contest that, that post, find it offensive or flag that post, Twitter is duty bound to take a second look at that. And once they find something that is um, unexpected, they don't wait to see what another person had said. They take action. It shows responsibility. It shows keeping to the tenets of, of the operational dynamics. And here is our Minister of Information who should know about the Twitter more than any other person outside of probably the Minister of um, uh, Communications. In fact, he should know more about, about Twitter because that's the information. Communication is more like the technicalities and all those things. But information, the social media, he should be the boss. And he doesn't really know how it operates. And that's the person we have as our minister. No, it's sad. It's unacceptable. It's offensive. I don't even know the words to use. And then let's get to the substance. Mr. President, you know, I watched that broadcast. And you see, talking about body language, you could see the total, you know, it disgusts. It's like, it, it's an irritant. And I asked myself, I don't think that what IPOP is doing is what I will support. I don't think so any day, any time. But please, where do we start to compare the activities of iPod and the activities of the herdsmen? Where do we start to compare? Number of killings? What the economy has been run down because farmers cannot go to farm? National security or the lack thereof? Because you cannot move freely on the road? What is national security when farming and unemployment is on the rise on account of people not being able to do their businesses. IPOP declares one day sit at home. While the, 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 the foreign Fulani headsmen, foreign Fulani headsmen have held this country to ransom. And my, 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 my minister has now rushed to issuing statements and hold press briefings I think that the time has come when we really should all wake up and ask ourselves what we want and where we're going from here. That's my take of that matter. All right. Um, there's also something in Unilag where it says it fires 
um, lecturers mentioned in sexual harassment uh, um, documentary. Um, that basically, um, you know, was a follow-up to the um, um, uh, documentary that was done, I think, about two years ago mm -hmm. um, by the BBC Africa Eye. Um, so is this, of course, um, uh, a victory uh, for, you know, that documentary? And, of course, at the same time, one step towards ending sexual harassment in the uh, university system. Within the context of sexual harassment, generally, rape, and all forms of acts of um, inhumanity where the females are the primary uh, victims. Uh, some people have said that uh, young boys are also victims, which, which is true, but um, you will agree that the women, the, the females are more of the victims. So to, to that extent, anything that can be a deterrent is something that should be welcomed by all well-meaning citizens. So to that extent, yes, I, I, I agree. There must be consequences. We must know that when you do something wrong, there's something waiting for you. That was why I held the Aquaibom State Independent um, um, Electoral Commission, INEC, when they were able to successfully, unfortunately, jail a professor because of malpractice on, a, on an election day. Let's begin this process of consequences for our actions. So to that extent, I hail that uh, the decision of Unilag, and I agree with them completely. I look forward to other sections of the society where Nigerians will know that there are consequences for actions. So for everything, the three Cs will always apply. The cause, the actions, and the consequences of the actions. So to that extent, I agree. And I think that that's the only reason I will see it as a main uh, subject matter on a discussion because there are certain subjects that I really don't even want to as much as mention or discuss. Uh, this person has decamped and so what? Please, let's talk something else. But this matter, I believe, is important enough for us to discuss. And I hope that all other rapists, all other people that abuse the privilege in the institutions of, 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 of higher learning will realize that they are paid salaries to do the work and they are not there to abuse people or to be abused. I think that's important to me within that context. Mm. Okay, so another story we've seen here on the papers, um, especially on the Daily Times, is a story of um, an assassination of Autumn's security advisor. Recall that a few months ago, Autumn had mentioned how he, you know, basically ran for his life after, you know, some gunmen attacked him on a farm. You know, it was a very big story at the time, but now his, his security advisor uh, has been, you know, was shot in the chest several times by gunmen on Tuesday. Coming, you know, shortly after Ahmed Gulak was killed. Well, what do you think about this? I think that uh, I have been waiting to hear the press briefing by our Minister of Information on insecurity. And above all, I'm waiting to see the red of the eye of Mr. President on the, the, the way that our lives are being wasted on a daily basis and on a very present basis, you know, or level. Secondly, um, last week, um, no, week before last on this program, I did express my dismay that the Inspector General of Police, uh, you know, expressed um, uh, seeming, I don't know the word to use, it's like he, he had been overwhelmed and he was wondering what next to do. Now, this issue of the police telling me that IPOP is gathering in, in a dose state, which is another news item, related to this, I'm asking myself, why is he giving me that information? If the police have such intel, what are they expected to do? We should stop hearing the police and start seeing their actions. I should be the one that is complaining. I should be the one, the citizens should be the ones calling the police and say, oh, we are hearing this, so we are seeing that. It's called intel. The police does not come to give the citizens intel. It is the citizens that give the police intel, and the police take action. And then we are emboldened to give them more intel. And then they take more action, and we are the safer for it. And then people are afraid to do anything because they know that if they do anything, the citizens will see them, they will get them across to the police, and the police will deal with them. That's the cycle that brings about peace and security in a country. 
and not the police seemingly throwing their hands in the air and say, uh, guys, I'm hearing that, uh, you know, I poor people are gathering in a Mr. Anyato, can you hear us? Okay, since we have lost uh, Mr. Anyato, we're going to reconnect with him and uh, continue the conversation and the review of these papers. There's still mm -hmm. a couple of uh, stories uh, that uh, we have le left to go through. There's one on the uh, Igbos abroad, insisting yes. on um, restructuring and um, fiscal federalism. Um, yes, there, that's, uh, it's on the Daily Sun, actually. And of course, uh, Alafi of you're saying agitation for self-determination, not um, a felony. Um, I hope that we can also go further into the IPOP gathering in Edo State, you know, and seeing, you know, uh, what um, what part of that, you, um, what where the what action government is expected to take. You know, have they broken any laws? Um, can people actually gather? Can people um, travel freely? Um, yes, yes, a proscribed group, and so gathering in the name of a proscribed group should be criminal. Uh, but let, let's see where it goes. You know, it's it's it's, it's always going to be our duty to remind the Nigerian police and security agencies. Um, of the rights of Nigerians, uh, regardless of what the, you know, the emotions are concerning certain things, um, rights still need to be respected. Uh, the law still needs to take its uh, cause. Mm -hmm. And you know, nobody's going to act based on their emotions or their or, you know, own personal biases. Um, there has to be that respect. Obviously, um, it still is a prescribed group on, until then. Nobody should gather. Or travel, you know, in the name of a prescribed group. So we'll yes. see how that goes. And, and I really wonder what more to take for us to properly restructure this country. We've seen how in other countries where things like this happen, when there's an internal agitation for something, and then people in diaspora begin to fight for that same thing and even begin to protest in those other countries and just how those things spiral out of control. Yeah. Now we see the evils abroad. And Mr. Yeto, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I, I wanted to bring you in on the conversation about Igbos abroad insisting on restructuring and to ask what, what else would it take for the government to truly restructure the country and the war powers the state? Let me say this. The earlier we wake up to the reality that the question of restructuring is, 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 is like an aircraft that has reached the, what they call the PNR, which is the point of no return. No matter how we want to look at it, there are cases that show that this country is not working. Not only so, there are things that have come to be in this country that has never been. This is the first time in the history of this country that the South East, the South South, the South West have come together. And now the Middle Belt have joined on a particular course. The South East, the South South, the South West, and the Middle Belt, they have joined. And they have the numbers right now. So this issue of, you know, grandstanding really doesn't make sense. So, you know, the issue is no longer the Igbo saying they must be restructuring. It is the question of over 75% of Nigerians saying they must be restructuring. Even the North. You see, one day I'll do an analysis that will show that the North is better off restructured. Because look, we have our human pride. The North is not, is not unproductive. The North is not unresourceful. This stigmatization of the North as leeches or as, as, as parasites is wrong. It's simply because we've created a system where it is so easy to just go to the center and collect. And we are all going to the center to collect. The only difference is that the resources are resident in the Niger Delta or in the South. The resources that are resident in the North are so enormous where several countries have been able to depend on the natural resources, the gold, the diamonds, all sorts of mineral resources in the north, the vast land. I've always said, if there was one, con one state I would wish to be governor of, it is Niger State. Because the land there, my networking with the Israelis on agriculture, I will feed Africa. I'll be a country on my own. The same thing with the vast lands in the north. And we're spending time talking about Katu Reri, Katu Reri, as if that is north. That's not north. 
Some of my best friends are northerners. These are intelligent, articulate, resourceful, upwardly mobile people. And because of the governance structure that we run, we make them look like people who are beggars. They are not beggars. We right. must restructure. Let everybody go back home. Let them start to bring about cerebral governance. People who understand what governance is. Instead of running politics and sharing oil. I pray that the oil in Nigeria dries up. Let us wake up and think. All right. Well, I'm not sure if we're ready for that. But let, let's us, uh, quickly also speak on uh, something um, on the punch this morning. It says 81 suspected kidnappers and bandits paraded. 47 AK-47 uh, rifles recovered. Um, I guess, you know, this is something that we should, you know, be happy about with regards to the fight against insecurity. Even if Nigerians have continued to also, you know, uh, mention that um, parading suspects um, um, is not, uh, show, is wrong. You know, if they have not been found guilty, uh, that you shouldn't, you know, parade them as uh, criminals. Yeah, two things. Parading suspects has become a pastime that um, I really can't understand what it means. I want to see convicting suspects, not parading suspects. How many times have they been paraded? And please, can people tell me what has been the outcome of those that were paraded in the past? So please, this public show is no longer, this media trial is not what I want. I want the police to come and show us people being escorted from the courtroom to the prisons. These are people who have been convicted, sentenced. That's what I want to see. That's what is going to gladden my heart. And not you come and show me these people, and then two years down the line, you are seeing the same set of people in another part of town having the time of their life. So what's that, the show? No, but in, with respect to AK-47, I want to even refer to a little story that somewhere where they cut a factory uh, is one in one of the papers where they manufacture AK-47. And the comment there is that the ones manufactured and the ones that are imported, you can tell the difference. Now, instead of going to close down that factory, is it possible for the Nigerian army to take over those people? You know, abroad, when they, they are certain criminals that become you know, um, what they call it, they become, um, you know, um, properties of state. Because the crime is so intelligent that instead of just prosecuting the person, you bring him in and kind of extract that technology or extract that knowledge and use it for better good of the society. So if we have a factory, a local factory that can do AK-47 to be that good, why we should not encourage them to continue we should take them in and let them serve punishment in a special factory where they have, they'll be manufacturing that, and that technology is enhanced and used in the larger interest of the country. I think that is cerebral governance. All right. I think we're out of time. Um, Ezekiel thought thank you so much for your time uh, this uh, Thursday morning, and uh, we wish you a very beautiful day ahead. Thank Thanks you. so much for having me. I can see your face. You can't see mine, but that's how it goes. <laughs> so Thank you us. again. Thank you. All right. Uh, stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll tell you what happened on this day in history. I'm going back to the year 2012 to talk about a really, really sad event. Quite sad as well from my end in Ghana. Just stay with us.